Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about leptospirosis or Weill syndrome or Fort Bragg fever. These are the different names for leptospirosis. We know that leptospirosis is one of the common zoonotic diseases in our country. It is commonly produced by a spirochid, that is a bacteria, leptospira indrogans. There are a lot of different uh, organisms which can be uh, responsible for leptospirosis. But in our country, uh, this leptospira indrogans is the most common organism which can produce leptospirosis. Nearly more than 1 million cases occurs annually all over the world. And it is mainly occurring in the third world countries and especially where there is floods are very common and tropical countries all those areas this infection is very very common whenever we treat a fever case so somebody come with fever to your clinic most of the cases what we come across are viral fevers they can have severe body pain myalgia uh, upper respiratory tract like symptoms but whereas in leptospira they resembles like any other viral fever it is not a virus it's a bacteria but they resemble like a viral fever they have moderate degree of fever back pain cough pain uh, thigh pain like myalgias are very common uh, redness of eyes are very common but they do not have urti symptoms like uh, rhinorrhea nasal congestion uh, sore throat all these things are not there so Initially itself, we can differentiate between common viral fevers from leptospirosis. But it will be difficult to identify this leptospira like, uh, with other uh, tropical fevers like uh, dengue fever or any other hemorrhagic fevers. Most of the time, dengue fever will not have URTA symptoms unlike uh, respiratory infections. They have all features of uh, leptospirosis but they do not produce any uh, renal involvement most of the time renal involvement is not common in uh, dengue fever but in severe leptospira that is uh, whale syndrome renal involvement is very very classical however initial phases of all these fevers like common viral fever dengue fever malaria leptospirosis the clinical features are same but you should understand one important point regarding leptospirosis means it's a moderate type of fever fever mostly lasts for one or two days then there is a period there there is no fever at all but after that patient develops jaundice renal failure pulmonary problem all these things are occurring in the second phase of the disease one of the important complication of leptospirosis is pulmonary hemorrhages that we'll discuss afterwards but many patients can have renal involvement mild to moderate renal failures are very common in leptospirosis. So we have discussed about the organism that is leptospira indrogans. It is mainly spread through the through the urine of rodents. Mainly through rodents there are a lot of other reservoirs are there. But rodents classically uh, is considered as the major reservoir for the disease and through the urine it will contaminate the uh, water and from there the patient gets the infection and some infections are very very severe that we can call it as uh, uh, wheel syndrome most of the time they are asymptomatic or mild fever can be there some patients go to wheel syndrome so here you can see the reservoirs rodents are the classical reservoirs other animals also can become the uh, part of uh, spreading of this disease it mainly contaminate the water source from there patient develops uh, leptospirosis some patients it can involve the organs that is a second phase of the disease that is wheel syndrome it's an antibody mediated problem so transmission from rodents or any other uh, animal can occur through water, uh, skin injuries are major uh, problem here. Mucosal membrane can be a uh, root of uh, infection. Intact skin only after prolonged contact 
by contaminated water can spread it otherwise routine uh, uh, contacts will not uh, transmit the disease ingestion of contaminated water rarely can produce uh, leptospirosis now leptospirosis there are two important phases one is phase 1 there you can see uh, fever and some amount of meningism skin rashes and uh, other symptoms like muscle pain vomiting conjunctival suffusion uh, moderate degree of fever abdominal pain all these things second phase is immune phase that is wheel syndrome wheel syndrome patient mainly in uh, develops multi organ dysfunction patient can have jaundice there is liver involvement hemorrhages because uh, the uh, liver is again involved uh, platelets are reduced kidney failure is common heart disease is common like myocarditis pericarditis all these things are there so there are two important phases first phase is leptospiremic phase other phase is immune phase that we can call it as wheel syndrome so wheel syndrome is mainly an immune phase uh, the first phase is bacteria is producing all the complications uh, it is moderate degree fever with some uh, involvement like meningitis uveitis skin rashes fever and all second phase is predominantly immune phase all the organs in our body are involved so that is wheel syndrome so you should differentiate between the leptospiremic phase and wheel syndrome leptospiremic phase is most of the time uh, the 90% of the patients can have this uh, feature and most of the time this will subside uh, without any complication very rarely patient go to second phase that is wheel syndrome most of the clinical features are due to vasculitis uh, most of the diseases any most of the infectious diseases this is a main problem uh, blood vessels are involved blood vessel leakage can occur so uh, that will lead to the complications blood vessel leakage can produce the extravasation of cells into uh, uh, external uh, path other than uh, like skin or lungs or brain Uh, almost all areas can be involved in wheel syndrome so that produces hemorrhages uh initial phase is again we we discuss that is a anectric phase there is no jaundice there then leptospiremic phase patient can have all features like fever chills headache nausea vomiting myalgia muscle tenderness photophobia mild cough chest pain it's like any other uh, fever like uh, um, uh, any other viral fever or dengue fever or uh, malaria so initial phase resembles like any other fever but second phase is very very important many patients will go to this multi organ dysfunction syndrome in that renal involvement is very very common if you take any wheel syndrome admitted to ward creatinine can be elevated creatinine kinase is elevated that is because of the muscle involvement myositis is very common inflammatory myositis is common so ck can be elevated creatinine can be elevated because of the renal failure then some patients can have liver involvement like sco2 sgpt can be marginally elevated many patients can have csf abnormalities but uh, they may not develop uh, meningitis or encephalitis rarely patient go to meningitis and encephalitis but but csf findings are very common uh, routinely we don't do csf in, uh, csf study in leptospirosis unless until they have uh, uh, clinical features of involvement of uh, uh, meninges or uh, encephalitis we can do that now clinical features again uh, in the first phase it is only fever uh, muscle pain conjunctival suffusion muscle tenderness but second phase that is uh, wheel syndrome patient can have liver involvement like uh, patient can have hepatomegaly hepatic tenderness liver failure splenomegaly and clinically it can be detected as mild to moderate jaundice then most of the patients can have elevated creatinine so renal failure is classical some patients may require dialysis pulmonary hemorrhages are very very important many if you see the chest x ray and leptospirosis most of the time you can see uh, it is normal so many cases of leptospirosis chest x rays can be normal some patients can have mild pneumonitis bilateral infiltrates can be there some patients can have ards finding bilateral diffuse infiltrates can be there hypoxia can be there 
but rare rarely some patients go to pulmonary hemorrhage this is a dangerous situation once the patient develops pulmonary hemorrhage the mortality is very very high so should be very careful when we are dealing with uh, uh, bilateral lung infiltrates mild lung, lung infiltrates can be due to pneumonitis moderate to severe lung infiltrates can be due to ARDS but initially itself if you are see, seeing very intense lung infiltrates white shadows throughout the lung field then should be we should uh, think that it is pulmonary hemorrhage mortality rates are very very high uh, it is more than the ARDS now patient can have pericarditis myocarditis cardiac failure shock Rhabdomyolysis is one important condition because many patients in leptospirosis you can see CK is highly elevated more than 1000 or 10,000 and in this CK elevation or rhabdomyolysis itself can produce renal failure so that also should be considered. Now we have already seen this uh, two phases anectric phase or ectric phase anectric phase is first and second phase uh, then if uh, patient develops jaundice, hemorrhages, renal failure, myocarditis, encephalitis, all these things are due to the immune mediated phase that is we can call it as ectric leptospirosis or whale syndrome. Okay, both are uh, same. Now we have already discussed about alveolar hemorrhage. So lens are involved in different ways in leptospirosis. It can be simple pulmonary infiltrates with mild hypoxemia and some patients it can have uh, they can have ARDS like which is bilateral diffused infiltrates rarely patient can have pulmonary hemorrhage it's a dangerous situation the mortality rate is very very high so whenever we see, you see a patient who is having leptospirosis and the chest x-rays are very bad like this bilateral lung infiltrates white shadows throughout the lung fields then the mortality rate is very high now it is very important to know the diagnostic test for leptospirosis uh, initially if the patient comes in one first day or second day of fever uh, it is very difficult to make a diagnosis by pcr or igm elisa test during that period if you take a fresh urine sample for dark field microscopy you can pick up leptospira in that so that is only possible for an expert uh, microbiologist uh, or a microbiology technician and we should take the fresh urine sample immediately it should be given to the lab that is very important so you can see the motile uh, organism which is actively mo uh, moving in the dark field microscopy PCR can be done that is a gold standard test IgM ELISA is very commonly available but it will be positive in the first week end of the first week because uh, it needs some time to develop the antibodies so antibody tests all are positive whether it is leptospira dengue uh, any other uh, infectious diseases antibody tests are positive at the end of the first week before that we can go for uh, antigen test or live bacteria detection test or PCR or culture whatever it is here the two important tests you, sh you should remember in our countries dark field microscopy very early we can detect but we need a help we need the help of a, a, a experienced microbiologist or microbiology technician PCR is a gold standard test if the labs are available we can do that and IgM leptospira is very commonly available test but remember in the first week early phases of the disease it will be negative so there is no point in doing this test in first or second day or third day of the disease you can wait clinically you can make a diagnosis then treat the patient if you want to make a diagnosis you have to wait five to seven days then we can do routine cb complete blood count test normally blood counts are slightly elevated in leptospirosis not very high like other bacterial infection and typical finding in CBC is low platelet count most of the patients can have a platelet count below 1 lakh and they can have 50,000, 20,000, 10,000 like that very low platelet counts are very very common so a patient who is having high degree fever or moderate degree fever thrombocytopenia three important differential diagnoses in our country are leptospirosis, dengue fever and malaria depending on the area from where they are coming 
we can make a diagnosis of differential diagnosis of all these things and in uh, leptospirosis in the second phase of the disease that is wheel syndrome we can see lft is slightly altering you can see stot stpt will be slightly elevated in hundreds normally stot stpt in leptospirosis will not cross thousands unless until they go to the severe phase of uh, wheel syndrome the stot stpt will be always in hundreds like 400 300 that is an usual range of uh, stot stpt creatinine kinase is a very important test in fever patients if a fever patient come with myalgia and ck is very highly elevated like 10000 or 20000 you should make a diagnosis of leptospirosis because all other viral fevers or dengue fever you can have patient can have myalgia but their muscle enzymes are not classically elevated this much but whereas in leptospirosis initially itself they can have muscle pain muscle tenderness especially in the calf muscles or thigh muscles and CK is very highly elevated. So you can make a diagnosis with that itself sometimes in a, in a, a given case. Now dark field microscopy we have already discussed it has got a poor sensitivity and specificity and if it, if it is present it shows high organism burden for the patient. So the number of organisms are very high and its sensitivity drops after first week initially you can see the leptospira bacteria in the urine but later it will disappear and uh, as i told in the previous slides we need a experienced microbiology staff to pick up uh, this organism now serology uh, Microscopic agglutination test is uh, commonly available. IgM LSI is available. Uh, indirect hemagglutinin assays are available. PCR is also available. So depending on your lab facility, you can ask these investigations. Whatever it is, most of the time, uh, leptospirosis is a clinical diagnosis. So if the patient is having high degree fever, muscle pain, conjunctival suffusion, there is no URTI symptoms. That is no rhinorrhea. There is no nasal congestion, there is no sore throat, we have to suspect leptospirosis. In an endemic area, we have to start treating the patient with uh, appropriate antibiotic. We should not wait for the uh, blood test to come as positive or negative. Now, ELISA is another important investigation in leptospirosis. The sensitivity is 35 to 76 percent, so specificity is 66 to 82 percent. We normally do ELISA IgM antibodies and end of the first week it will be positive. So early uh, phase of the disease it can be negative so we should never ask uh, this test in, uh, in the first uh, uh, at least in the first three days of the disease. MAT is another important investigation. It's a gold standard investigation. Titer is more than 1 is to 200 or serial titer more than 1 is to 100 suggest leptospirosis. So if it is available in your hospital, you can do that. Otherwise, routinely available test is leptospira IgM. That should not be asked in the first three days of the uh, fever. It can be negative in the initial phase of the disease. Now, this is the organism. It's a tightly coiled, highly motile spirochid bacterium. So that produces uh, all these problems. It is Leptospira endrogens. There are a lot of Leptospira species available in our country. Uh, many a times uh, these are not uh, uh, capable to produce any problem, but the tests can be positive sometimes. Uh, 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 there is a cross reactivity among uh, all these organisms for the test. So, you should be very careful, uh, like a patient who is having dengue fever. Uh, who have all features of dengue fever, but if you send leptospira, then sometimes it can be the test can be positive. That may be due to uh, 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 less virulent leptospira or a previous infection can produce leptospira IgM positive. So you should be very careful uh, in sending investigation in leptospirosis. Clinical judgment is very very important. Like a patient with fever, moderate degree fever. Severe muscle pain, muscle tenderness, conjunctival suffusion, uh, mild thrombocytopenia may uh, give a clue towards leptospirosis. 
and immediately we have to if you suspect leptospirosis immediately we have to treat otherwise in the second phase treatment is very very difficult because it's an antibody mediated uh, uh, problem so the treatment will be very difficult now there is a criteria that is called as modified fans criteria i'm not going to discuss that here because these uh, criteria are important for an inexperienced doctor if you are seeing leptospira every day in your practice you will not miss it but even then these criteria are available you should you can read this criteria because uh, it may help you in making a diagnosis when you are working in a non endemic area now management is very important like i told uh, leptospira is one disease which is very mild in the initial phase some patients can go to immune phase uh, there is a second phase there is an antibody mediated phase we will not be able to treat with our antibiotics in that phase because it's a immune mediated phase antibiotics will not work there so if you have doubt that it is leptospirosis like patient is having moderate degree fever conjunctival suffusion eye tenderness muscle tenderness calf muscles and uh, thigh muscles have tenderness elevation in ck low platelet count then you can make a clinical diagnosis of leptospirosis immediately we have to start antibiotic almost all antibiotics all routinely used antibiotics can kill leptospirosis even single dose of antibiotic can kill almost all leptospira in your body so we have to treat uh, effectively in the first day itself you make a clinical diagnosis treat it immediately otherwise patient can can that means sometimes patient can go to the second phase of the disease that is wheel syndrome you will not be able to treat with any of this antibiotic in the second phase because it's an immune phase you have to if there is a, a respiratory problem you have to ventilate the patient if it's a renal problem you have to dialyze the patient and the treatment cost is very very high during the second phase but whereas in the first phase if you start a single doxycycline tablet like uh, 200 mg bd can be started in the first day 100 mg od can be started in the second day onwards that can uh, tackle the issue uh, there itself but if you don't treat in the first phase patient may go to the second phase and uh, it will not be enough that doxycycline will not be enough so treatment is very important once you make a clinical diagnosis any antibiotics like you can give doxycycline amoxicillin amoxicillin clavulanic acid azithromycin any types of penicillin like uh, i uh, crystalline penicillin or any other penicillin can be treated ceftriaxone can be treated so almost all first line antibiotics we use in our clinical practice can be given but remember in pregnancy uh, we can give amoxicillin and azithromycin these are the good choices if the patient is admitted single crystalline penicillin alone is enough because uh, uh, leptospira resistance is not very common to the penicillin now second important thing is prophylaxis if you are working in a area where there is leptospirosis is endemic or lot of rodents are there and you are working in a flood area or uh, some disaster work you are doing as a uh, healthcare professional you have to take uh, doxycycline prophylaxis that is 200 mg per hour every week for 2 to 3 weeks and so that is very important Uh, doxycycline prophylaxis uh, can be given uh, for the healthcare professionals those who are working in uh, endemic areas or uh, those who are working in a, uh, in an area where there is flood or disaster occurred so uh, doxycycline prophylaxis can be one other prophylaxis should be uh, taken against uh, this uh, uh, infection that we'll see Uh, preventive measures like you uh, use uh, personal protective equipments like gloves boots goggles direct contact with uh, flood waters uh, doxycycline or azithromycin prophylaxis that we have uh, already discussed contact with fresh water sources contaminated animal urine human vaccines are available but uh, in our country at present it is not available and vaccines to pets and uh, other uh, animals can be tried so we have uh, discussed about uh, one of the common 
zoonotic infection in our country that is leptospirosis initial phases it is a very simple uh, bacterial infection can be treated with all simple antibiotics that is patient can have a mild fever mild to moderate fever some muscle pain conjunctival suffusion initially if you start doxycycline uh, it will be controlled uh, very fast without any complication rarely patient can go to the second phase that is immune mediated uh, meal syndrome patient can have multi organ dysfunction syndrome in that pulmonary hemorrhage if it occurs that is very very important the prognosis in pulmonary uh, hemorrhage alveolar hemorrhage is, is very grave patient can deteriorate very fast thank you